these kids thought they were high on Molly. So every single sample I tested was methadone. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. A hundred percent methadone. Unbelievable. Yeah, purple to black is uh, MDMA, highlighter yellow is bath salts. Uh, There's no ambiguity there. There you go. What, shake it around? Close the lid and just agitate it a bit. And bath salts. So we got these yellow bath salts. That's bath salts. Shut up. <laughs> he bought $4,000 worth of bath oh salts. Oh my god. <laughs> America is losing the war on drugs faster than ever, with a wildly unregulated drug market in zero oversight when it comes to substance adulteration and underage distribution. Bath salts and research chemicals have managed to explode onto the scene, yet simultaneously slip under the radar with deadly consequences. Five friends decided that the best way to expose this issue was to hit the road with some cameras, two cars, and whatever budget we could scrape together. We took two months off of our normal jobs and traveled 12,000 miles around the country to six music festivals to document the spread of drug misrepresentation as well as the harm reduction movement to fight the adulteration problem. Yeah, as far as my knowledge, like research chemicals and whatnot, the way they're affecting, like, you know what I mean, just the, the scene in general is just that it's it's something that's negative that's occurring before people that they don't, and they don't even realize it, you know what I mean? So I think the the negative aspects of it is that people are, not, are very ill-informed about what is really happening when they take certain substances and what those substances are, because... I mean, when it comes to drugs, this drug use in general is a pretty shady thing to do. And it doesn't, like, you know what I mean? It's not like people are, like, categorizing, figuring out whether or not it's organic or whether or not it's healthy. Because at no point can you really justify a lot of substances as being healthy for a human. So a lot of those, like, standards of what you put into your body get thrown out the window. People put way, have way too much confidence in their ability to distinguish uh, one psychoactive drug from another. And that is really unfortunate how much blind confidence people have in their, their own ability. You know, it's, it's true for wine tasters as well. You know, a lot of this stuff is just fake. People think that they're, they have this very discerning palate and they can, they can detect these minute chemical variations in a, in a substance they're ingesting, but they most certainly cannot. For those not in the know, here's a quick breakdown of the modern party drug scene. Common drugs from previous generations like LSD, mushrooms, cocaine, and opiates are still popular, but they've been joined by the likes of MDMA and ecstasy, amphetamines, ketamine, and a massive array of others. In fact, there are so many different psychoactive substances floating through our country that people don't even realize how complicated things have gotten. We quickly discovered that the majority of the time, People were surprised to find that their bag of drugs was not what they had paid for. Look at that lens. So cool. That's bath salt? Yep. Can I see okay. this for a second? So, and again, what is bath salt? Okay, well, he told me we can take it back and he yeah, showed me and tell me what back. it is. So, let's do it. Zero confusion or gray area. Okay, yeah, yeah, the test is great. Okay. okay, actually, yeah. That's a good point. You could get away with just the mandolin kit. The bunk place exists because we've learned from the past. We've seen these problems in the past. Alcohol prohibition led to blindness, paralysis, and death among thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of people. And these are the same problems that we're working with today. Molly is the moonshine of today, and, and you know people are adulterating that with synthetic cathinones, you know, experimental amphetamines, all kinds of strange things, and it's becoming incredibly dangerous. And the reason I want to stay anonymous, and the reason why this organization is anonymous, is not because of the federal government. We, we're very comfortable with 
federal laws. Um, and we, we're also becoming more and more comfortable with state laws after years of doing this and having been stopped in quite a few different states and had conversations with the police. And, and you know, what we are afraid of is the other side of the law. Um, we, we are preventing drug dealers from making money, and that's, you know, not something that they take lightly. And we have seen, you know, a little bit of a blowback on that, and we can only see that potentially getting stronger. So we're protecting ourselves as much as we can and staying out of that. So this is a uh, marquee reagent test kit. It's primarily for testing MDMA. It's very simple to use. All you do is take a tiny little bit of whatever you're trying to test, pill, powder, blotter, paper, and put just a little sample into this empty vial. And then all you do is pour one or two drops, ideally actually just one drop, you don't need very much to get it to react, of this reagent liquid onto your sample. And then you're gonna compare the color reaction of the sample with the reaction in the lid. I'm using more liquid than I need to just to show you guys an example so that you can see it very clearly. But what we're seeing here is the reaction turning dark pretty quickly. And <coughs> according to this color chart, what we're looking at is most likely MDMA. It's going from a purplish to a black pretty quickly. And what we don't want to see is any of this yellow area in here. That's bath salts or synthetic cathinones, and that's what we typically see more than half the time whenever we're walking around. This technology is not necessarily considered to be the most accurate and advanced amongst the scientific community, but considering that the alternative is to just blindly take something that somebody gave you and trust them, it's a really easy and reliable way to avoid taking something dangerous. All right, so we just had a uh, group of people bring this in. Um, it's supposed to be MDMA, and it looks like we have a mix of some sort of synthetic cathinone, those are bath salts, and also uh, potentially methamphetamine. So this was actually supposed to be molly, which is MDMA, and it's not even close. Um, so yeah, these are some of the really dangerous things that we're seeing out here. And this is what we're trying to stop. Then, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's like a tiny little bit. Just a drop or two. It takes a little while to, you have to tab it. That's good. There you go. Close it and shake it. Yellow. So what is that? That's bath salts. Salt. Okay, let's not take bath salts. <laughs> oh shit, we just wasted like a hundred bucks. That's, I'm fine with that. I'd rather not take bath salts. Yeah, that's so <laughs> fucked. Great, thank you. I feel like this was worth our time. Yeah, so what can bath salts do to you? All right, so basically, you know, four years ago, Five hits of acid, guy told me five bucks a hit was useless. I had to take all five to get high. Next year, same price, I bought 15 thinking I can get three people high on five tabs. Uh, I took one, it was the most intense shit of my life and I've done acid considerably. Now, yesterday I went out and bought apparently MDMA and the guy said, best shit ever, right? Best shit ever. And I didn't really see it, you know, it's dark. I took it and fuck man, it took me for a ride. It really did. It was more of a, uh, you know, like I said earlier, fuzzy, um, incoherent, surprising. It was all about... <laughs> Dude, he didn't fucking tell me what was going on. That was the biggest issue, to be perfectly honest. Um, apart from that, the deep secret is that it was kind of enjoyable. And I don't really like that. I don't know, man. It was something fucked. I'm not used to it. Bath salts aren't in Canada. So I, I really don't know what else there is, man. It's just... People gotta be straight up. I like my hallucinogenics, and that was not fucking straight up. You can pretty much purchase any substance that you'd like from any corner of the world. Um, China and India have really jumped onto the bandwagon as far as this goes, and they have clandestine labs set up to produce any substance in any quantity at any time. And um, you know, dealers and users alike are taking advantage of this, and in the way that dealers are taking advantage of this is they're misrepresenting these substances that they're able to buy so cheaply online um, as something that's a little bit more accepted socially like MDMA or LSD or cocaine. There are quite a few other tour uh, websites that you know available to consumers that are trying to fill the gap that the Silk Road has left, and, and beyond that, I mean, you know, there were things before tours, just Alibaba, 
and you know there will be after. It's it's just the inevitable movement of the market, and we need to prepare for it. It just depends on what substance is being misrepresented and and what the misrepresentation is. Um, you know, obviously there are drugs like Bromo Dragonfly, PMA, 4MTA, that uh, that are majorly toxic and and have a strong chance of killing the user if used in excess. Um, and in that case, misrepresentation is a huge problem. In other cases, maybe not as much. You know, maybe someone substitutes pro-LAD for LSD. As far as I know, pro-LAD is not a particularly dangerous compound and there's no reason to assume that it would have a higher toxicity or a lower toxicity than uh, than LSD, but it just really depends. For all you know, maybe maybe it, it does have some unforeseen horrible effect. That you know, a classic example would be AET, alpha ethyl tryptamine. Um, that was actually not only used as a recreational drug; that was used as a pharmaceutical by it was approved and used briefly by Upjohn in the 50s, um, and that happened to produce a, a condition called a granulocytosis and uh, really suppress people's immune systems in a major way. But there was no way they could have anticipated that. None of the related compounds induce a granulocytosis. But let's take a look at methamphetamine, you know, or back then GHB. Um, methamphetamine had battery acid in it. It had phosphorus in it. It had everything but, you know, a pure plant derivative uh, drug. My name is Diane Goldstein. I'm a speaker for law enforcement against prohibition and a retired lieutenant from Redondo Beach Police Department in California. I have a bachelor's degree in legal studies uh, and I was the first female lieutenant in our agency. We clamped down on um, uh, pseudonephrine, okay, is you saw all the laws that came out that you could only buy Sudafed. Uh, which was used to make methamphetamine. It's so the more we cranked down on, on laws that didn't allow you know, people to just go in and, and buy as much Sudafed as they wanted, is you saw the market change over where there were new and different types of chemical uh, reactions that were then done to create methamphetamine. So you had normal methamphetamine and then you had what was called Nazi style methamphetamine that didn't need certain chemicals. Now it was the same thing with MDMA, it was the same thing with, with GHB. The root cause of most of it is our current drug policies and you know that's because you know, the things that we know about, the things that are there throughout time are illegal. So we can't research on them. We can't talk about them. We can't regulate them. We can't do any of that. And like, you still have people, you still have a thrill seeking, you know, drug using population, or you still have people who suffer from addiction. And so you still have people out there wanting to use drugs. And so there still needs to be there, you know, we just keep evolving the drugs that are available because the ones we know about are illegal and it's, they're harder to access. So like, to me, I think there's a lot of things, but I think okay. drug policy is like the main thing affecting It's no secret that kids like to experiment with drugs. In many cases, a lot of modern parents had similar experiences 30 years ago. But of course, every parent thinks their child is the one who avoids bad decisions. It's a classic paradox that most parents just can't seem to wrap their minds around. If you tell someone they're not allowed to do something, it usually just makes them want to do it more. This phenomena is particularly true with young people. The combination of innate human curiosity and common teenage rebellion lead naturally to experimentation, and an astoundingly high percentage of Americans try drugs at least once in their life. So that is... Run away! So yep. Nafra. Pure yellow. Start to finish. Alright. Just a little nan. A little piece? Tiniest piece. Alright. Like this? Like this? Huh? Yep. I thought they were white. And then you want to block transfer ice. 
Oh, yeah. Coolers are already out. What does that mean? Lid. <laughs> Every time we went to a chemical source to try to eliminate that chemical source, it, it, because it, most of these chemicals have legitimate uses for, for other, um, you know, industries, is what we saw is there was some brilliant chemist or some, you know, uh, rocket scientist who just developed another chemical reaction to do that drug. And that's what you're seeing with bath salts. You know, that's what you're seeing with ecstasy now. That's what you're seeing, you know, there's, and for years, um, there's always been drug dealers who have uh, made drugs that haven't been that drug that they're selling. That's not uncommon. Um, and so you're going to continue to see that market because that market continues to be unregulated. There's no purity testing. Uh, it's no different than, than kind of the medical marijuana world right now with, with um, uh, testing for molds or funguses or pesticides. And so the more we allow an unregulated market, the more we lose control and it becomes even more dangerous for that end consumer. I think one of the cases that really stuck to me was when this 14-year-old was taken in to the hospital and actually died on the way there because he... Um, was using some substances that he didn't actually know what they were and the next thing you know he was just foaming at the mouth and take it to the hospital and then you just never heard anything anymore from him so he just kind of died I suppose. You never turned to him and he took it back. You never friended him. Is that too um, I think that a lot of people aren't really aware of like reactions and don't actually stop to think about like what might happen to them or they sit there and think it's one thing and don't actually know its effects. Like, I mean, I grew up not really knowing anything and I think that if I was, I'm a little impressionable, so I think if someone told me that something was okay, not that I would go ahead and try it, but there are kids that would actually go and do it just because, you know, hey, they don't really know very much about it. And even though it is being taught in school, not to that point where like, they cover everything there is to know about it. Um, went to a rave. I was in San Diego. Had a friend. Went to a rave. I was really drunk when I got there. That's cool. But I met some people. They were like, "Hey, Molly, do you want some?" I was like, "Oh yeah, sure, I guess." But um, they gave it to me. Whatever. I was already I was already too drunk to even realize what was going on. But I took it. And I blacked out at that point. And then um, next thing I know, I wake up in the hospital. And then um, best friend at the time, he was actually in a coma, two doors down. And uh, it was the same thing. He took the same thing I did. And um, actually, I was told when I woke up that I had died. And I got resuscitated in the ambulance. And um, um, basically went back and just tell everybody it was my fault. Like everything happened, it was my fault. They, 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 can, they can get all these, these drugs and manufacture them so cheaply and, and it's, they're, they're lying. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're taking something on, on, a, on a pure basis of trust and it can kill you. It's not a matter of going out and having a good time. I mean, I'd, I'd like to go have some fun, but frank for 13 hours? Oh, thank you. I, I had a friend last summer who did that. I was here uh, they were told that they were getting some, uh, I don't even know what it was, but he ended up taking... Actually, to be honest with you, I think it was a, uh, a friend had found it. They had taken it in 13-hour fry. My uh, employment history, we'll start there. I was an intelligence analyst with the Drug Enforcement Administration for 13 years, from 1998 until uh, 2011. I certainly have seen it to be a, be a problem, right? I mean, this is, you know, the, it, it, drugs are never sold at the, uh, at the retail level in the same form they, they're produced. Um, so necessarily, right, there are adult, adulterants and additives in virtually every sort of retail purchase of drugs. Um, the problem with that, there are a number of problems with that. One, of course, is a lot of the adulterants are, are dangerous because they're completely unregulated. And the adulterants and, you know, a corollary problem is, you know, widely varying potency levels, right? That's what, of course, leads to a lot of accidental overdoses. Um, but I think it's important to look at why that happens, right? The system we have incentivizes 
adulterating drugs that are sold on the street. So on that one hand, we have this multi-billion dollar business, right, that we've completely turned over to criminal organizations. So there's no regulatory system, right? There's, there's, no, there's no FDA inspector looking to make sure that what you're selling on the street is what you're really claiming it is. Um, there's no inspections of laboratories and that sort of thing. And so, and at the same time, right, when there are grievances, right? If you go to the store, the store and buy a six pack of Budweiser, open it up and pour it and it's Pepsi, well, you can go back to the store. If the store owner says, hey, you know, I don't care, well, then you can go to court, right? If the same thing happens to someone who dry, buys an illicit substance, there's no, there's no recourse. So, the, so we really incentivize traffickers and, and distributors to adulterate their drugs. And at the same time, because of prohibition, we provide no legal recourse through the courts or any other remedy for consumers to challenge when what they're sold isn't what they were told they were sold. Um, it's really unique. I mean, if you, we saw this with alcohol, but just hypothetically in the future, right? If we were to say, okay, we're not going to federally regulate tobacco and, and alcohol anymore. Anybody can produce it. Anybody can sell it. And if somebody sells you something that isn't really alcohol, you know, you're out of luck. Well, it wouldn't be too long before there were, were bad actors that entered the marketplace and started selling adulterated or counterfeit goods. So that's exactly what we see. So it's a, it's a huge problem, unfortunately. And I think one of the unfortunate consequences of the war on drug mentality is that there's very little sympathy for people who use drugs, right? <laughs> Even though everybody knows someone who uses drugs, the vast majority of them live normal lives, you know, we, this, this mindset that kind of goes along with the just say no, uh, the just say no culture, right, the, the prohibitionist culture, is that people who use drugs are bad. So if they buy something on the street, they're not supposed to get it, that they, that they w didn't bargain for, well, that's too bad, they shouldn't have been doing something illegal. I thought you were going to record them putting it in there? Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Just put one of each, just a little bit. This is the MDMA I bought off. This guy, came, this guy came around, he told us, he tested it, and... Yeah, and then this stuff we tested, and we don't have a fucking clue what it is. It's MDVP. MDVP, and that's yep. a big fucking rock. Yeah. I'm just gonna toss that back in there. Okay, I'm gonna test these two, and then I'm gonna put the kit next to it so you can see. Okay? Okay. Is that, can it, is that recording uh, vocals? Okay, that is bath salts. You can see it's fizzing yellow. If you look at this, all yellow is bath salts. This is clear and it's fizzing up, which means it doesn't even register on here, no one even knows what it is. It could be M MDVP, it could be a number of things. And these are being sold as MDMA. Yeah. Yep. I've had kids tell me they don't even want to know what's in the drugs, which is really scary, seeing as I've tested glass, I've tested all sorts of different things, methamphetamine, uh, bath salts, research chemicals, all sorts of things. Okay. That is bath salts. That's a random chemical no one knows about. This. Is MDMA. It's turned black. That's how it should look. This is what people are selling. That's why so many people are calling the medics right now. So many people are getting sick and getting hurt. It's because of that. I've had people, people get mad at me after I've tested their stuff um, because either one, they didn't know it was real, or two, they knew it was real and knew it wasn't real and didn't want to get caught. I've had people, you know, with huge bags of methamphetamine or bath salts and uh, I tested it in front of them and they're like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And then two minutes later, I see him selling it to some kid down the street. Calling it this exact same Calling it MDMA though. after I just tested it in front of them and showed them it was fake. So if you're out there, be safe. A lot of the issues of, of adulterants are a fact, they're a function of the fact that it's illegal, right? If, if I'm going to put something in my mouth um, that the government recognizes, and, and that can be uh, uh, toothpaste or uh, cake mix, um, or you know, you go to a grocery store, something you can pick off the counter and, and put in your mouth, there's a burden of proof on the person putting it out there that it won't do any harm to me. Um, and in fact, take that piece, take Betty Crocker cake mix off the shelf, flip it to the side, and it's got to say what's in it. Um, and manufacturers have fought hard in, in terms of how that wording is, but in general, government has stepped forward, and in that case, made the supplier, made the seller, provide more information to the consumer. In other words, the, the assumption is that if the consumer isn't informed, that's a bad thing. And we have pretty good examples of that, that if the consumer isn't informed, 
bad things can happen. Especially the chemicals that have different lengths of time for the dose. You know, if you take a dose and you're expecting to have a 12-hour trip, but then all of a sudden you have a two- or three-day experience, that can be very scary, and it's going to cause hospital visits. And as well, depending on the dosage level, I mean, it depends on how they're distributing it, I suppose, but if, if they're distributing it and the person thinks they should take, you know, a certain amount of dose, but they take, like, you know, potentially more than that, they might overdose. So it, there's a lot of factors. Drugs is the flip side of that, right? Basically... Because of, of government's prohibition against this, the supplier is free to put whatever crap they want into it. And, um, and from, from, from what we know of the market, that's a bad thing. That puts the consumer in a position of complete ignorance. And if we look at some of the worst consequences of drug abuse, overdoses, because I don't, I don't know the actual quantity of what's in there, right? So I think I'm taking as much as I usually do and when I've done that in the past, I've had the desired effect, or at least if nothing else, my body's been able to handle it. But if you're selling me this amount, and somebody else comes along and sells me what looks like that amount, but the purity in the second one is twice as much, I have no clue. I can kind of guess, they tell me it's really good or whatever. Now I'm gonna put it in my body, and I'm gonna kind of hope that I have the right amount. Well, that difference in purity level that can have a bad outcome. Now you bring in the notion of, well, what am I making it to make it less pure? Or what am I putting it in there to give it a little bit of extra kick or whatever and all that? And that also can lead to a negative outcome. That can poison me. That can lead to, to other negative consequences. And, and you, know, you can go through the list of, of bad things that can happen to the human body as a result of ingesting stuff they shouldn't be ingesting. Um, that's a function of the illegality of it. Uh, if we were to regulate it, if we were to be something that we had to sell over the counter, then we would have to list on the package what's in there, how much of these different substances. Um, I don't necessarily envision a day where uh, 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 we will have every uh, illicit and recreational substance sitting there on, on the Walgreens counter, and you can go and pick up the packet and say, ooh, 0.5%, ooh, point, you know, 1% or whatever. I don't, I mean, that's a better bargain for, for my dollar. Um, but at least government stop from being the, the, the one that's, that's leading to the ignorance of consumers and at least opening up so consumers can be informed. Yeah, what up, guys? Got mixed processes. Uh, we got candy. We will release it in conjunction. You open up? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, dude, this shit's like weird and wet. And it's like boys. And plus, we gotta do fun things. Like, There's a message. Oh, are we working out? Yeah, that's a good message. Well. Yeah, dude. No, we're working out. Yeah, definitely. We've been really good talks. Because it definitely is like a big thing. Yeah, they say they signed it. It was, suppo it was supposed to be cut with a code. Yeah, the message has to be It's kind of like a yellowy color, but it's a little bit. But then he was just so deep. Yeah. Uh, last year we bought a, well we brought our own acid with us from Chicago and we got sold to us as doses on sweet tarts so we couldn't test it and it turned out being DOC and we took a bunch of it, they were all like triple drop sweet tarts and a couple of my buddies got really sick and were vomiting and like you know, having diarrhea and the shits off of it and then like uh, I was doing okay for a while, me and my girlfriend took it and I was doing just fine like on it, like I was having a good time, like I was handling my shit, like it wasn't very visual but like my body felt like like I was tripping balls. And then uh, like we watched Ludacris and that tripped us out, so we left. So there was just too many rowdy drunk people. And then like I just started not feeling well. And like I, I like have a, I get anxiety attacks sometimes and I have anxiety problems. But, like that's never been a problem with doses before or mushrooms. But like it got in my head and so like I ready, we came back to the tent, campground, just chilled out, like smoked some weed. And like thought I'm gonna my trip back and so took one of the mollies we brought and I went to Radiohead. And then like I just started sweating like profusely, really, really like hot. Like I couldn't stop sweating. And I asked my girlfriend, like, I was like, yo, are you really hot? And she was she was cold, like wearing a hoodie. And I was like, this isn't fucking good then. Who wants to go last night? No, no he to say I took one lick of it and I was like, this is nothing of my outer sport in this. Yeah, you can just grab some of your fingers. It's not valuable, don't worry. <laughs> Yellow. 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 Yellow.
Is it bath salts? I heard. It's bath salts, Sean. It's bath salts? It's bath salts? Yeah, it's probably four yeah, mech from what it looks like. It's not. Yeah, this kid's got fucking bath salts. He tried to feed his bath salts. You're a fucking co worker. Look at this steam in there. He's on some shit, dude. Don't worry about the other one. He's fucking us up, man. It is not Molly, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not Molly. I knew it wasn't Molly. Who'd y'all get it from? I got it from a co worker. From a co worker back home, really? Yeah. Dude, we'll take this back with you and fucking call him out. And uh, we found these two like shady ass kids, and like just basically like, pulled out a giant sheet of blotter tab, and like he was just handling it with like ease and just like touching the paper and shit. So I would just immediately assume it was gonna be bunk and just like just blotter tab, nothing even on it. But then like we took it, my entire mouth went numb. In like 20 minutes, I was tripping balls. Like I've never seen. Like I was in a different world. What? My cousin, she was 16. She was uh, told by even what I would probably call responsible people that thought that they were helping out. Had some molly, turned out to be cut with God knows what. Hospital says bath salts. They don't even know. Uh, so she wakes up one morning after a fun party. Can't feel her arms and legs. Lungs are kind of groggy and real nasty. She's taken to a clinic, they don't know what to do, so they take her med flighter straight to Sacramento. It's like two or three days before she falls into a coma, and it just goes downhill from there. And then, uh, like five minutes after she said that, she uh, went into like a seizure and like stopped breathing, and uh, basically, like her heart stopped beating as well, and like was on the ground. And uh, after like 15 minutes of her, like not 15 minutes, I'd say like five minutes of her just like on the ground like paramedics finally came I like, got her like woke her up and shit like they got her back to consciousness but she still wasn't in the state of mind that, like she could like realize what was going on and so like basically it was a whole ordeal like I had to get in the ambulance I was tripping balls had no clue what was going on my girlfriend just literally like died in my arms I was like worst experience of my life still affects me today I still deal with the post-traumatic stress of that moment and like flashbacks not even flashbacks of like LSD flashbacks but just normal flashbacks of just like like drama and distress and like all that part. And they're talking about amputating her legs. If she may never walk again. She may never come out of her coma. And she never did. About four or five days into the coma, still on, you know, what they would call intensive life support. Lungs just continued to fill with fluid and she basically had drowned in her sleep one night in a coma. And that's the story. I don't know enough drug dealers to, to say with certainty. Um, you know, I've seen, I suppose I've seen both sides of it. I was just in Africa filming for a month, a few weeks ago, and, uh, and I literally saw drug dealers cutting heroin with, with rat poison. Not a strychnine based rat poison, but a super warfarin containing rat poison. That, uh, and that's the sort of thing that you would think, when I heard that they were doing it, I didn't believe it because that's the sort of like classic drug scare thing that you hear someone say, oh, don't, don't do that, it's cut with rat poison. And you think, why would anyone ever cut a drug that they're intending to consume with rat poison? That's completely illogical and dangerous. But, you know, I saw it happening and, uh, and they claim that it produced a, a superior product. So drug dealers have embraced research chemicals for one reason, and, that, and that's a profit margin. Um, when you look at the difference between something like MDMA or LSD, cocaine, compared to the research chemicals we're seeing today, like methylone, 4-FMA, that sort of thing, um, the difference is you, know, you may double your money with the more well-known drugs, or you may make 10 to 20 times as much with the research chemicals. So, I mean, it's a really hard thing for people to ignore, especially in the economy of today. No. <laughs> I think, by and large, most people that are involved in the trade now are in it for the profit motive. And the reason for that, of course, is that the war on drugs, right, prohibition, builds in a tremendous profit motive. Um, and at the same time, right, turns all the trade over to criminal organizations 
who, by their very nature, right, their pursuit is of money and power and not of social betterment. So while I, I think there probably are some people out there making MDMA and, and other substances that, right, because they think it, it helps people, and in a lot of cases I think they're right, um, I think by and large what we've done through our prohibitionist policy is to sort of squeeze those people right, who care more about the societal benefits, of, potential societal benefits of using these mind-altering substances, kind of push them out of the marketplace and replace them with, more often than not, violent criminal actors who don't have as, as pure of motives. And unfortunately, right, law enforcement doesn't make any distinction whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, I think the last significant trafficker that I'm aware of that really did what he did for, uh, I would say, you know, a higher purpose for higher motives was William Leonard Picard, right, who had the, uh, the massive LSD laboratory and a missile silo and is now serving two life sentences in prison. Um, there's no consideration in how he was sentenced for the fact that the product was very pure, the product was very good, it was never rep misrepresented, he didn't make nearly as much money as the government claimed that he did. Um, nobody cares, right? So if you're selling something highly adulterated, highly dangerous to an eight-year-old, right, as far as the law is concerned, that's exactly the same as operating in really a, a, an ethical manner the way Picard did. What do you call it? It's what do you call it? It's like, they walk around horses. Like, I'll buy the sticks, we'll have a hat. They don't do it. It's like chilling in there. Joey, do you have the clear vial? Did you just walk off with that? Yes, you did. It's in your hand, dude. Can I have that back? Okay, so what are we testing right now? Right now, we're just, I know this is real because I, I don't even want to waste any because I drove it from home. And um, I'm going to test the sassafras I bought and the molly. Okay. After the first year I came down, I got beat so hard on the drugs, I was unprepared for it. I um, decided that I was going to take the risk on the 16 hour drive and bring down basically three class A drugs every, every year. And I already have been caught in other states and I have a prior felony and that's a big risk for me. I would go to jail if I get caught again. I got off the first time, but they don't give me another shot with this shit. Just the tiniest little sample. Oh, I don't mind wasting it. It's a great thing. For yeah, for sure. I'm pretty excited. Now I'm ready for bottom. Let's say tap the bottom. There we go. Oh, oh my jelly. Oh. And now, that's a bad slot. So there you go. There you go. Purchase that. Very deceivingly, I sell this at home. It even played me. What can you do? This had the right look. This had the right taste. I sold the gin to a guy who sells about friggin' 14 grams a week of real shit. And it played me. So, there you go. Thanks to these guys, I just found out this is... I would never let my girlfriend take this one. It's garbage. I'm mean, actually victim of the system. I'm gonna sell it to somebody. So, you know, these things do do happen and uh, and there are different types of, of vendors of the material just like anything else. There are people that legitimately care about their product and want to introduce a material that they might even think of some therapeutic effect. Um, and maybe that is, a, you know, a truly altruistic endeavor. Uh, then there are people who are solely interested in profit. Um, I, uh, and, and it's very hard to say say what is what. I analyzed a sample recently of, that was, uh, you know, kind of a unidentified empathogen, intactogen compound that the person thought might be MDMA. It was actually another compound, MDMAT, um, which, and you could look at that from two different perspectives. You could say maybe the drug dealer that sold this person MDMAT and told them it was MDMA uh, did so because MDMAT, at least based on the scientific literature, is you know a non-neurotoxic serotonin releaser. And maybe they thought, oh, I'm just going to substitute this compound that has a lower toxicity and thus help mankind. Uh, or the flip side of the coin is that MDMAT is an unscheduled compound and that it can be acquired inexpensively on the internet in its pure form and they did it to save money and put themselves at less risk. Because the real trick is 
um, like phony drugs, they have to charge the same price to make it seem legitimate. They're not gonna say like, oh, here's a gram for like 25 bucks, and you know signs up. You know what I mean? So in the end, you get hit real hard when you get fucked, because like they charge it as if it was real. Paid about, oh no, she owed me some money, so I got it for free. But either way, like my boy paid for that, you know, that mom, and it was legit. Like, oh, he thought it was legit, you know? And I thought it was legit too. Okay, yeah, I think that a lot of it has to do with the drug policy in this country and the way we educate our youth about drugs. Because when we're telling everyone from the time you grow up that drugs are bad and you need to say no to drugs, and when the government is comparing your brain to an egg and getting high to it, frying in a pan, because that's when I grow up, that's what they were doing. When I, when I see all those commercials and stuff, but then when you try pot or something else, you, know, you see, well, it's not so bad and then you start doing more and more stuff and being more and more risky because you think that everything you've been taught was a lie and that it was all propaganda and so then you can't listen to anything you were taught. But the fact is is that there's a lot of things that we should be listening to about drug use but there also is a lot of propaganda and so I think that's where we need to have honest drug education about the positives and negatives, not just lies and propaganda only about the negatives or, or, or just you know, fabricating things that aren't even true at all. Uh, I think, to be completely honest, it would discourage a lot of drug use just because um, the connotation with any drug for a young person that's probably experimenting is that it's going to be fun. You know, and knowing side effects is never fun. You know what I mean? Knowing the su negative side effects of taking a substance is not a fun thing because it's always going to be negative for the most part, you know? And the things that are deemed positive is a really opinion thing, you know what I mean? Some people don't, when it comes to a mind altering psychedelic substance, you know, most it's really opinion, opinion based on whether or not you think a spiritual journey is beneficial to your human aura or not. Some people find that extremely beneficial to who you are as a person and what it does for, you know, your mind and everything. And some people see that technically pointless based on what their outlook on life is. Kind of the aim of these. Wow, moment of truth, I guess. Yeah, right? Let's see what we got. What's in my bag? There it is. I'm gonna do my best here. Two. What do we got? Just like bath salts. No fucking way, really? Yeah, yellow is fossils. Holy shit. Really? <laughs> like metal one? It could be any one of them. They're all kind of the same shape and brightness. Yeah? You can see it on the color wheel. So we got... We got to test yours now. Do a lot of those have similar effects? Or to the yeah. Well, no, no, that's not the... That I got in there. You can even just scrape together the powder. Yeah. No way. So I'm about to get that lot of money back. So are you. I just want people to understand what's going on. And even if they don't want a kit, like read this and you have at least a mental sense of what the deal is. You know, I've been using reagent test kits just on a personal level, uh, just so I could identify uh, substances for myself for, uh, you know, just for personal reasons. And I began to become aware of the analogs and the cathinones and basically the imposter drugs that people are dishonestly labeling as more commonly known uh, tried and true and tested clinically proven drugs that have research backed behind them, unlike these fake drugs. Yeah, I had a, uh, a buddy actually die at, um, at 
last year because he ate some bad drugs that someone told him was LSD and it was like a, some research chemical knockoff. They actually put 30 people in the hospital and killed five and that really brought my awareness up. So I think that you guys are doing a great job out here. For real. Bad things that I've seen, um, I've seen people overdose on 25i NBOME and just become like catatonic sitting in a chair and pretty much unresponsive and just moving in a way that you just know they're on some sort of unfamiliar, strange, uh, not particularly recreational chemical whether they intended on it or not and it's really not pretty to see. You know, and I think perhaps it's a good thing that certain people are discouraged, you know what I mean? Because it'll, it, not like drug use is like a, a lifestyle fit for only a certain elite of people, but more so it's for a responsible person, you know, more so than a person trying to explore their, you know, the, the idea of fun. It's from Detroit. What the fuck? And some, some white sass. Some more white sauce. Some more moon rocks. This is a little bit different. It's from Germany. I love to test people's shit and watch it turn yellow, and they think that that was real. Like, it's terrible to see someone who's been doing BK MDMA or methalone for, say, a whole year thinking that was MDMA. And when they try something real, they think it's fake. I've had people get angry with me thinking my product was fake because they're used to the the speedier edge to BK MDMA. <laughs> this is fucking crazy. You just taking pictures like for the website or what? For the documentary. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta let me that. get some of this. That is just about as clean a reaction as you can expect from the man. And that, like, it's, it's to the point it's so bad these days that people believe, kids growing up these days, like getting into the scene, believe that methalone is real MDMA. So they, they believe that, say they have a negative effect from it, they, they just judge that and they instantly say, oh, well that was terrible because I did it once and I know it was real. Like, it's terrible that... It's just completely different than, like, say, from the 90s growing up the to the 2000s growing up to now. Like, it's it's just, it's terrible, honestly. Well, I think in a perfect world, it would very closely mirror what we currently do with alcohol and tobacco. And, you know, if you look at it kind of strategically, the purpose of all the different regulatory schemes in the different states for how we approach alcohol and tobacco is right, to make sure that they're pure, to make sure that what consumers are buying is what, the product is being represented as, and to make sure that, you know, to the extent possible, those substances are kept out of the hands of minors. Um, those are really the goals. And we understand that people are going to drink, and we understand that people are going to use tobacco, but that the, the goals for society are that, right? So I think, you know, regard not only to marijuana, but really with regard to all drugs, the goal should be right, to, to make sure that products are as pure as possible, that consumers know what they're buying, that there's honest consumer education, that there's honest education for kids about what drugs do what and, and what dangers and risks they may pose. Um, and also that to the extent possible, uh, minors do not have access to those drugs. And that's really the opposite of what the current war on drugs does, right? I mean, we've, you know, the current system just, uh, does, you know, dealers, people who sell drugs right now don't care if they're selling to a 12-year-old or a 32-year-old. And oftentimes they don't care if they're selling uh, MDMA or, or some other substance that's potentially a lot more dangerous. What you have is chaos. The media and our law enforcement leaders and our politicians would make it seem like we have control of the drug markets, but we don't. The only people that drug prohibition helps at this point are the two spectrums on either end. There's the bad guys, the cartels, the thugs, the crooks, who are benefiting from the, I think it's something like a $300 billion international uh, drug market that we currently have and those trying to catch the bad guys, which is law enforcement, politicians who continue to get elected on the tough on crime stance. Well, we knew what could happen with, 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 with cocaine. Um, we knew what could happen with heroin, and we had a pretty good box on that. Um, the, and, and you had incidences back in the 80s and, and even 70s where um, if heroin was, was adulterated with something that was killing people, um, even the marijuana paraquat, spraying or whatever and stuff. Word got out and people are like, wow, 
you know, look out for this, or if it has these characteristics, and even law enforcement as well as health officials were putting the word out and all that. Well, look at the, the, the narrow number of options of, 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 of bad things on either side of, of, of that spectrum can happen. When we get into, it's a little white pill. It's infinite. It's yellow. It's not good. <laughs> Almost good ground for I'm sure this will be fun. Yep, that's a new good test for you. When it comes to government being involved with substance use, uh, it, it I think it just it, it's a weird subject. I don't really have a solid answer, but I guess for me, for myself, I don't like the idea of them being involved with something that their knowledge is really just cut and dry about, you know? You know, I, I definitely lean toward a very libertarian uh, perspective on these things, and if anything, I would much prefer them to have absolutely no involvement if, it, if the alternative is what's going on right now, um, because what's going on right now is absolutely terrible and is hurting people, it's putting people in prison, it's making drugs less pure, more dangerous. A lot of this misrepresentation that exists is a direct result of prohibition. Um, and, uh, and that is, is really, really unfortunate. Even, even the DEA and all of their misguided efforts wouldn't want that to be happening. You're not going to stop people from doing things that they want to do by just cutting off ability for them to do it safely. It's just not going to happen. It's been proven time and time again. If you take away, make something illegal, take away people's you know, ability to, to make sure it's safe, it's not going to stop them from doing it. So you're just you know, sending people out to blindly buy things and do it without giving them the option to make sure it's okay to put in their bodies. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me at all. Because if they're going to acknowledge that there are drugs here, obviously, they have to acknowledge there's a lot of bad drugs here and bad people that are going to sell really bad things. And, you know, like kids bought, I think it was supposed to, it was supposed to be MDMA, and it ended up being tested. We saw um, like some horrible, like, you know, bath salts or something or some chemical that Googled and was like, it's just crazy. Like, there's crazy shit. That should be good if that went right. There she goes. That's it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> that is the real deal. Like, that's the contrast between them. Hell oh, yeah. Do you think that that at the bottom is enough? Alright. Molly, is that what you're testing? Okay. Will you hold this again? Yeah. Oops. Yellow. All the way over, over that yellow? It's over here. It's yeah. All the yellow. Dang. It's crazy. M methylone. So what role? I mean, ideally, in some kind of ideal situation, they would play a role that is similar to the role that the FDA should be playing of, of regulating the purity of materials and, and uh, enforcing a manufacturing standard, that sort of thing. Or even, or even you know, in a really ideal situation, conducting toxicological investigations to evaluate the true safety or danger of, the, of these compounds so that people can use them in a less Risky manner. <laughs> oh, and so it, it starts off super golden. Ew. And then after a minute, it will c turn completely orange. Yeah. Slash kind of red. Mm. So, and like none of those really were identified on this table, so 
we're a little worried. We just don't take no for an answer. Um, we, festivals have shut us down. Uh, event, other events have, and we just do it anyways. We we do what needs to be done in order to save lives and to keep people from injuring themselves potentially permanently. You know, like I think it's about time that people of stature in the industry start like stepping up and talking about what's going on and promoting safer use instead of, you know, even I see those folks pointing a finger, you know, and saying, well, reassess why you're coming to a show or reassess why you're coming to a festival. I think that's very judgmental, you know, you can't be judgmental. You have to be, you know, responsible. You have to be realistic. So I think it's time the whole community starts addressing it and taking it seriously. Bunk shit everywhere. It's out here more than people would believe. Like. Everyone needs to test their stuff before they do it. Everyone. Like, all my friends I preach, don't buy it unless you test it. Like, because you never know what you're getting. It can look like the best stuff in the world, but you don't know unless you test it. Like, you should test everything that you have. I believe that, like, 100%. I just think that people, people need to know what's going on. Yes, make sure that you are getting what you are getting. And the price doesn't matter. Just because you go cheaper doesn't mean it's better. Like, I don't want to throw it out because I want to show you guys. I want you guys to know that there is this shit going on around here. Chest your shit before you buy it. You don't know what you're getting out here. It's random dudes just going, looking to make a buck. So, be safe, boys. Girls, do what you got to do, but don't be stupid. You know, I'm a parent. I have four kids. I certainly hope they don't use drugs, but I'm realistic enough to know, know enough to realize that it's not beyond the realm of possibility. And if they were ever in a situation like that, I sure would rather they uh, they know what they're buying and they know what they're using and, and they're, they're in a safe place to do it. You know, to accept that the drug use is an innate human drive and to try and facilitate that use safely, that would be ideal. That's not going to happen. 